Let's say you are a basketball coach. Your team is in the semis against a fairly weaker team. Before the match, everything seemed really easy. You can even hear your players talk about the final. But when the match starts, you immediately notice that it won't be as easy as you think. But hey, don't forget, you are still the better team, right? Okay, the match has now progressed and it's the middle of the third quarter. Your team has been playing really poorly and you are 6 points behind. Even though you said it a million times at the halftime not to switch in defense, one of your players decides to switch and commits a really easy foul. You are furious. How can someone understand not to switch? Next position, the same player commits another foul and now he is ejected. But the position is not even close to foul. You are basically crazed. Your team is playing really bad and now one of your players is ejected unfairly. So. You go near the ref and start objecting to him. He seems like he's not really listening, so you decide to go louder. Hmm, not really a good idea, is it? Then, it comes. Believe it or not, as a basketball coach, this situation has happened to me more than you think. But why? Getting ejected from 5 fouls is a part of basketball, and when you think for the second time, you really should have pulled him to the bench to be honest. But what made you so angry then? Why did you lose your control and make the situation even worse? This wasn't even that big of a deal. Dolph Zillman may have the answers for your questions. He states that, Residual excitation from essentially any excited emotional reaction is capable of intensifying any other excited emotional reaction. So, in this case, being behind in the game, players not being able to implement the tactics given, have intensified the emotions you experience when you hear that unfair whistle. <coughs> Under normal circumstances, you would never take that far against a ref, but when it merged with the previous anger, you just couldn't hold yourself back. And this even has a name in social psychology. Excitation transfer theory. But should it always handle anger? For example, the game has developed and your most trusted player is able to score a buzzer beater and win you the game. Now, the whole team is literally flying because of happiness. But why? The game shouldn't have come to this spot at the first place and you should have been able to win it without last second miracles. Excitation transfer theory also steps in at this point. The anger and the fear you experience at the beginning has also intensified the happiness which came with the win. If the game was as expected, easy and non-challenging, you wouldn't feel as happy as you did. So, this shows that the excitation transfer processes are not limited to a single emotion. People experience various emotions throughout the day. One should keep in mind that every emotion or reaction faced might be under the influence of previous ones. Keeping this in mind may allow you to empathize more in your life, which would eventually lead to better personal relationships. Thank you for listening and have a great day.